Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everyone. Welcome back to day number 27 of Ramadan 360. I was thinking, why did I set that timer that long? I don't get a chance to spend too much time with you all. There's so many fleeting moments remaining, subhanAllah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah to Nimra, to, uh, ooh, so much messages moving in, Khadija, to Taghid, to Saw, to Um Ibrahim, to Brother Bilal. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody. Let's take a second, actually, let me just enable the video so I can see lovely people on my screen, inshallah. Uh, and please do, uh, please do take, take a second and join if you're able to. Shout out to Bilal, Hajra, Ragad, Ahmed Bati. If there was a consistency award, you guys would get the gold medal, mashallah. You guys would have to share it, mashallah. Brother Hassan, of course, as well. Allahumma barik. Welcome back to the 27th day. How was your 27th night? For those of you who've had it, I know some folks, I think Singapore, Malaysia, like the Far East folks are probably experiencing it right now. Nigeria, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah as but nice. Oh, it's this 27th is going is going on right now, mashallah. Nemo, Brother Uthman is saying it's the 28th here in Nigeria. I'm sure it was packed. I hope you guys enjoyed those masjid fundraisers. May Allah put barakah on our masjids and uh, allow them to meet their goals and continue it with, with, with ease throughout, uh, throughout the rest of the year. I mean, it's the 27th here right now in Malaysia. That's amazing. Any, actually, you know what, subhanAllah, I noticed that uh, post 27th, especially the way that yeah, Brother Bilal is like, oh man, these must be fundraisers. <laughs> they did a number on us. Alhamdulillah. Um, what do you call it? I, I feel like it's easy, especially with it being the weekend now and the remaining nights. A lot of times people will get kind of uh, not demotivated or they'll, they'll, they'll be like, okay, hey, Ramadan is pretty much done. We knocked off the 27th night. Let's start preparing for Eid. Let's start going to these Eid bazaars and, and kick things off with the shopping. Um, any advice for those of you who have Maybe you had a da'a that was accepted in the last few nights of Ramadan or whatever you tell yourself, whatever you, you use to motivate yourself to, to push forward for the last few nights. Feel free to share any advice to your fellow Muslims here in the chat. Yes, the 29th is left still. And I know I've been listening to all these theories. I was just watching Sheikh Ammar Shukri's live and I know some other instructors have mentioned this uh, as well when discussing Layatul Qadr. I think Sheikh Ammar also mentioned something similar on Friday is that it depends on the way that you count. There's so many variables when it comes to this. There's no, there's nothing safe about betting on just one ninth and, and that what night that night actually being the 27th. Uh, SubhanAllah, depending on when you do your counting, depending on where you start your month, et cetera. So uh, it's always... Uh, it's, it's it's a risk that we can't afford to take to not maximize our times. Marissa from Singapore, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Lovely to have you back. I see Saeed Ali from Calgary on my screen, mashallah. I feel like I haven't, unless I haven't scrolled far enough to see Saeed. Shout out to you for joining us, mashallah, on screen. That's amazing. Allahumma barik. Um, so today we're going to be kicking off uh, with Sheikh Kamal Maki, who you guys know and love, alhamdulillah. Um, but before we do, I see some good advice coming in here in the chat. Uh, Brother Blas saying the more, more earnest du'a, the better. Uh, I use the techniques from the Allah's Name series, which have been really helpful. Um, what do you call it? Brother Ahmed saying, I'm doing abbreviated Friday to Sunday itikaf. It's been really helpful. That's awesome. That's a really good suggestion. MashaAllah. Uh, and yes, Sister Aisha is saying, the Qadr rotates, so there's no guarantee of when it's going to be. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah aziza from Trinidad. Shout out to Fasleen here, dropping the links as always in the chat. Alhamdulillah. So we're winding up a Ramadan 360 um, you know, subhanAllah, like program in a couple of days now, in three, four days. This is our fourth last session, subhanAllah. Um, so there's going to be, I know it's going to be a little bit bittersweet. I want you guys to to remain motivated and to remain excited because so, there's so many amazing programs coming up. And you're not, this is not a goodbye to me, to the instructors, to Al-Maghrib. A lot of times, even myself, I'm 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 very guilty of this. I I can't remember the last Ramadan 360 that ended that I didn't cry. <laughs> but you have to remind yourself that there's there's always some great like some greatness to look forward to. And this community is so much bigger. The Muslim Ummah is so much bigger than the month of Ramadan. We feel that energy, we feel that togetherness. We're in the masajid. So it feels like it's so much more real and and we feel bit like a bit more essential, a bit more of a part of this community. But the Amakum community is beautiful. And I know I, we're always shouting out how international, how global we all are here. But that's that is the Amakum community, mashallah. Where our on-site classes alone are in Canada, the US, the UK. Scandinavia, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia. So those alone, you're going to meet, you know, inshallah, insta insta instructors and see, see the experiences and be part of the programs in person if they come to you soon, inshallah. And then we have our Amal Group online classes. Many of the instructors that you've seen already through Ramadan 360, Sheikh Ammar Shukri, Sheikh Walid Basuni, Sheikh Zad Tasneem, 
I'm trying to remember everybody as fast as I can. Sheikh Kamal, who's here today, has a class called Confidential, who's that someone went, won the first Kahoot, mashallah, tabarakallah. Um, so many, Sheikh Suleiman Hani, so many have online classes or online classes are upcoming, launching with them this year, inshallah. So look forward to the exciting things that are upcoming with Al-Maghrib. There is trips planned. Mashallah, the blessed voyage to Bosnia has just been secured with Sheikh Yasser Burjas. So if you're trying to put Baraka and be part of that environment while you're traveling as well, if you want to do an Umrah or a Hajj this year, there's so much opportunity to stay connected. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I wish I could show you how much bigger it is in this community, but you guys are just going to have to continue the journey and 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 move on to the next and, be part and continue with us and Inshallah, to see exactly what that means and what that looks like, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Anissa from London, lovely to have you back. Yes, uh, can't wait for, for next Ramadan. There's also the Hijjah 360 upcoming, inshallah, which we typically do. I haven't confirmed. I will not confirm or deny. But inshallah, we typically do the first 10 days of the Hijjah as well so that you guys get a refresher literally like a, less than a couple of months, inshallah, afterwards. And yes, Solange is screaming in the chat. Ilm Summit is back. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, I haven't I haven't mentioned. It is a bit far from here, but if you can make it, it's going to be an experience. Ilm Summit is this one week intensive that Amagrib used to be famous for, I'm told, back in the day. I've not yet had the chance to benefit i'll be honest i've just ever since i joined the staff it's like it's like this myth that everyone speaks about the ilm summit days ilm summit was so crazy and it was so like this and it was so like that and there's nothing ever that's come after that that's compared to it so they've been hyping this up for me for about five years now so i myself am very excited it is it is entirely in person because it's quite like an intensive experience. It's like morning to evening, barely any sleep, intense learning, knowledge, all the, you know, some of the senior shiuk with Al-Maghrib, Sheikh Walid Basuni, Sheikh Yasser Burjas, uh, you know, Sheikh Abu Isa, and then of course, Sheikh Ammar Shukri, and uh, Sheikh, I think, Muhammad Shnawi is going this year. So, mashallah, it's it's pretty jam-packed. Uh, and it's like so many, so many topics that you're covering so much. Uh, it's a very limited kind of environment. It's a, a certain group of students that are allowed in, and then it kind of closes off. And it's really a magical experience, I'm told. I'm hoping to be able to go and Inshallah, uh, soon. So check it out. That's at Elm Summit. I think it's almagrib.org forward slash Elm Summit is a link. Uh, if Asleen fast, finds it faster than me, inshallah, she could drop it into the chat for me as well. With that said, uh, Sheikh Kamal Maki's topic today, inshallah, is going to be reflection and contemplation. We're very excited to jump in with him uh, in a few short minutes. I want to remind you guys, as always, please do support generously the charity, the charity partners that have made Ramadan 360 possible this year, year after year. We have that we have a lot of charity sponsors that, want to let, that come back that 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 love this community, they love this energy. They're like, you guys are just weird the way that you guys work. But mashallah, 30 days, it builds this level of intensity, alhamdulillah. Uh, so we're very grateful to have them come back and to support us. And of course, mashallah, I know it's very easy. We were always reminded of charity, you know, every single day in Ramadan, subhanAllah, that you, we don't we don't skip a reminder. But make sure that if you can, that you start, you create something recurring after Ramadan as well, inshallah. Somebody, some of you super fans, mashallah, were messaging me here on, on uh, Telegram asking me if there was like going to be a Friday weekly giving post Ramadan for Al-Maghrib as well. And actually, I was told that we launched that in December. So if you guys want to continue kind of having this as a back pocket continuation of your of your Sadaqah Jariah, inshallah, there is on Al-Maghrib.org forward slash donate after Ramadan, you'll have the ability to set up a Juma a, a weekly donation as well, inshallah, if you want to do that. And of course, mashallah, you guys, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Ammar was pushing so hard for us to hit 50k at the end of the, by the end of the day or he, I think he was saying by the end of Saturday Mia session but alhamdulillah we ended up hitting it eventually uh, at the end of the day with Sheikh Sulaiman Hani uh, so alhamdulillah Allahumma barik jazakumullah khair for time after time coming together to help us reach our goals we're kind of at that final stretch now where I think it's like one fifth uh, of our goal is left, alhamdulillah. And I know with the last remaining nights, with the, the final effort that, that inshallah, everyone wants to maximize on, especially those of you who are having your 27th night and et cetera, right now that we're going to get there. So once again, that's almagrib.org forward slash donut. I just want to check where it's at right now so I can share with you. I have to get to the US one because my Canadian one is confusing. Uh, is this the US? There you go. Bismillah. Okay, so we're at 253, alhamdulillah. So we're getting closer and closer and closer to our goal. Jazakallah khair. May Allah make it heavy on your skills. I can't tell you how much of an impact I see every single Ramadan when we have, uh, you know, like we have funds to be able to allocate towards projects that maybe that are dreams right now that we've been thinking up, that we've been hoping, that we've been building up, subhanAllah, or those projects that need, maybe we need more, more scholarship funding, or maybe people need a, a larger percentage of scholarships and we don't have that much funding remaining to offer them. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan and your donations, your, your support in Ramadan gives us the ability to maximize and to, to start building up the funds so that we can support, uh, you know, Muslims throughout the year, alhamdulillah. 
Nima, that's very sweetly said. Nima, Nima says, Al Maghrib deserves everything. Allahumma barak. Jazakum Allah khair for your kind words and for your support. Uh, I'm just going to check in here, make sure everything is good uh, for Sheikh to join us, inshallah. And then we're going to jump into um, our session for today. Uh, I was I just in the beginning of the session as people were joining. Um, what do you call it? I was asking folks to give any advice to, to people in this final stretch. Uh, any advice that you would even give to yourself uh, if you were starting Ramadan, the, the actions that you wish you did a little bit more that you maximize, maybe make note of them so that you remember them for next Ramadan, inshallah. Um, so Jazakum Allah khair for those who did drop some some advice. I want to see some more, inshallah. Just to encourage those who are maybe feeling like they got to the end of this month and they weren't able to with their work schedules, with life, with their responsibilities to maximize the rest of their efforts uh, or to, to maximize the efforts as much as they would want to, uh, to give them some kind of uh, encouragement and support, inshallah. Um, what do you call it? Suri says, unplug the TV and delete the social media apps to remove any temptations. Great, great suggestion from you, Suri. Jazakum Allah khair. Um, someone said Ramadan Umrah. May Allah facilitate or allow all of us to go to Umrah in Ramadan. Ameen. Um, I see someone said, attend the Hajjud with consistency. MashaAllah. Um, let's see what else there is. Do energy categories of goodness for a moment daily get offline. Oh, energy categories of goodness for that's a great suggestion, Brother Uthman. What I'm understanding it as is is have like you know spurts of time that you're focusing on specific in, in specific moments. So you set a timer or something. Um, you said you're saying daily and get offline. Let me know if that, I, I misunderstood that. Uh, I log off of socials, you watch Islamic videos, ikhlas. Honestly, even, even when I'm having a lull in my nightly ibadah and I'm trying to maintain the full night, sometimes just watching a video, watching, honestly, re-watching one of the uh, Ramadan series videos does it for me. It gives me that, just that extra little reminder or push or urge. Uh, even re-watching this Ramadan 360 session that I was too focused on other things. I was distracted by trying to find something or trying to respond to people and stuff like that. Uh, it allows me to feel that extra bit of a push, alhamdulillah. Less cooking, <laughs> make more time for ibadah. Great advice, great advice, mashallah. Fix your sleep schedule. It can impact a Ramadan experience. Have a healthy diet and read more. Mashallah, that's really good suggestion. That's it. To be honest, people get stuck in trying to manage their bodies and manage their, their circadian rhythm and all that kind of stuff in, in Ramadan. So it's definitely something that you should set your, your goals to fix up before Ramadan. Um, if you find your tongue quiet, do dhikr. MashaAllah. That's incredible. Keep these coming. That's amazing to see uh, all this advice advice coming out from you guys. MashaAllah. Um, let's see. You'll, you'll miss every day Zoom meeting. I know every day is, is it's been a, it's been a, a, such a beautiful experience. It's I feel like there's no other time in the year that we could put up with <laughs> with each other every single day, handle like this level of, of consistency every single time, this commitment, subhanAllah. But mashallah, there's something in Ramadan um, that just it, it, it gives you the ability to do things that you can't do outside of the month of Ramadan. There's some barakah in it. Um, alhamdulillah. Um, let me just I see that brother Abdurrahman um what do you call it is with us alhamdulillah my co-host i was going to say my host with the most but i don't think that works i think it only works with the female hostess with the mostest uh but i do want to bring him on inshallah for a second i just want to check in the background that everything is good to go for us for today's session uh and i'll be right back with you brother the man i don't know if you're in front of your fancy mic set up uh with the fancy lights but uh lovely to have you on and to have you back with the ramadan 360 if you're able to uh be with us alhamdulillah um, I know Abdurrahman is going to be back inshallah with one of our final sessions. So looking forward to him uh, being there for that. And I hope that you guys as well. Let me just take a quick second to do a commercial break and we will be right back with you all. Bismillah. Okie dokie. All right, guys, bear with me inshallah. A lot of the higher education when it came to Islamic studies was like you had to travel overseas to get it, right? Um, and it was only a handful of people who could do this. Now, alhamdulillah, what one of the things that Maghrib is doing is making it accessible to everyone, both on site as well as online. Whether you're teaching a weekend with Al Maghrib or a double weekend with Al Maghrib or an evening with Al Maghrib or online with Al Maghrib, that emphasis of the experience is unlike anything that I've seen anywhere else. Make sure that you also support Al Maghrib in whatever way that you can. Because remember, supporting an institute of knowledge is to support oneself first and foremost. Whoever does good will get better than it. Because what you get from Allah will be better than what you give in His cause. Al Maghrib's belief is that Islam should be easy and accessible, and its focus is on grassroots. 
It's not focused on creating a scholarly class. It's not focused on a very niche group of individuals, but it's for the everyday Muslim. And then number two, the way that we go about it, the approach that we have is by looking at what are the problems that people have and in learning Islam, what are the problems that people have in learning Islam and then going out and solving those problems. One of the most important uh, aspects of the real values, the culture of the Maghrib Institute is that nobody gets turned away and it's always been like that. things about Maghrib is that it hasn't failed to deliver on its promise. And what I've seen in multiple situations are when students at Al Maghrib go on to become teachers, da'is, activists that are rooted in Islamic knowledge and at the same time, not just transformed, but transformational. And I think that's the legacy as well of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimullah, that he always wanted to invest in people. He always wanted to give more to people. And it wasn't about giving them Al Maghrib, it was about giving them Islam. And that was his legacy and it continues till this day. When it comes to Al Maghrib, its system has always adjusted to meet its intention. And that's an institution that's worth supporting. It's not just an institution that is surviving the test of time or that has produced obvious results in some of the students of knowledge and some of the people that have gone on to become great people in our community. But it's also in how the organization is always self-critical and asking itself how it can do better at disseminating this item and constantly adjusting with the means and the methods. And so by you supporting it, you give it an opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to make those adjustments with Ihsan as it continues to engage in that self-critical thought with Ihsan. One thing about Al Maghrib right now, after 20 plus years of doing this, this beautiful work for Allah Azza wa Jal, we dedicated to authentic knowledge, alhamdulillah, also to serious topics and subjects of ilm and knowledge, in addition, of course, to practical things people need on a daily basis for Allah Azza wa So if there's anything I recommend for people to uh, uh, to witness is that the, the kind of effect, the ilm and the knowledge and the companionship and the tarbiyah that Al Maghrib provides to its own local communities and to themselves, inshallah ta'ala. This is a very unique, alhamdulillah, experience. And I want each and every one of you to come and join us with that experience, inshallah ta'ala. What makes Al Maghrib invaluable in the sphere of Islamic knowledge is the fact that there are so many ways to learn. My personal favorite and the, the way that I personally learn best is through the in-person seminars. And I still attend them even as an instructor. Whenever a seminar comes to Houston, I always go and I really, really enjoy them. And so the idea of being able to have on-site classes and if you can't access them, being able to access online classes is something that really makes al Maghrib invaluable. Knowledge is, is not informational, it's transformational right? That the whole purpose of having knowledge isn't just to build our information, but it's to transform. And, and Al-Maghrib is supporting that transformation at an individual level and on a collective level as a community. It is transforming communities. And that's why we really, really need to support Al-Maghrib and the efforts that they are making. All righty. Jazakumullah khair, everyone, for sticking around for that brief, quote unquote, commercial break. Alhamdulillah. Um, we have a slight shift to our schedule today, but Alhamdulillah, we're going to push forward. And I've never been more grateful that Usada Taymiyya Zubair is here for us always throughout the beginning of the sessions, because what we're going to do today, inshallah, is we're going to do a little switcheroo. So we're going to start with the Quran Reflect on today's topic. Uh, so you guys will stretch those muscles first, inshallah, and then we will bring Sheikh Kamal on for his Ramadan 360 topic. So it's going to be an interesting, alhamdulillah, day. We'll flip the schedule, inshallah, uh, but alhamdulillah, we're going to keep us, keep it pushing, keep it going, and we're very excited to cover it and to be with you all, alhamdulillah, for day number 27 of Ramadan 360. Um, the reflection, the, the topic today, of course, is reflection and contemplation. So let's jump into our Quran reflect session. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, plot twist indeed, whoever it was who said that. Um, let's jump in. Ustada Taymiyya Zubair, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Oh. Do you hear me? Yes, 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 I hear you. <laughs> That's, you got me scared for a second. No, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, ready? I'm... Yes, awesome. I just wanted to ask you as well. I was going to ask you this later is that I'd like yeah. what I've been asking the students as well. Sometimes after the 27th night, for a lot of us, it's it's happened or it's happening. Once that ends, people get into Eid mode and they kind of maybe neglect the last few nights of Ramadan. So any advice that you have for folks, inshallah, um, who are kind of trying to maximize and trying to not get distracted before the end of the month? I think... Um... 
Other than that, there's also another problem, which is that when you see in the morning people sharing photos of, you know, the sunrise and you have this guilt in your heart that, oh, my God, I slept for those two hours and I shouldn't have. I think last night was really late at Al-Qadr and I should have done more and I didn't. And you have this guilt in your heart uh, and, you know, you kind of feel like, what's the point even? You know, I should just give up. Uh, so it's very important to not give up, even if you have not been able to do much until now, there's still time, there's still hope, right? It's still Ramadan. A lot, this is still a blessed month. Every day, every night is special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people in this month, right? So, okay, you may feel like you may have missed Laylatul Qadr, like, you know, This morning, subhanAllah, I saw some photos that people had shared of sunrises and I was like, oh my God, uh, my my little one was not feeling well. And I, you know, I I was with him, so I, I wasn't able to do much. And I had this heaviness in my heart and I was like, khalas, I'm not looking at any more photos. I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on, you know, what I missed or, you know, how I could have done more. Um, I did what I could, but, th th you know, there, there's still some Ramadan left. So, inshallah. And there's still the night the, the night of 29, right? Exactly. And there's also this understanding of how the Laylatul Qadr is supposed to be counted, depending on whether the month is going to be 29 days or 30 days. So you really don't know which night is Laylatul Qadr, right? So you, you have to make the most of whatever remains of this month, inshallah. All right, Bismillah. Let's jump into our Quran reflection for today. I'll pass it off to you. Bismillah. All right. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Wa hlu al-uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma ahdi qalbi wa saddid lisani. Wa salu al-sakhimata qalbi. Ameen ya Rabbil alameen. So today's topic is of tafakkur and tadabbur. And these are words that occur many times in the Quran. Both mean, you know, reflection, contemplation, to think about something and to continue to think about it. Tadabbur is from dubur. Dubur is the back of something. So tadabbur is to, you know, think about something and then go back again and then think about it again and then go back again. You need to repeatedly bring your thoughts, uh, you know, on a certain matter. Uh, you need to, to continue to reflect on it. And reflection is something that requires time and attention. It's not something that you can do in a rush. It's not something that you can do when you're distracted. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, an action that you do with your body or something that you say so that you can get over with quickly. It's to do with your mind and your thoughts. So it requires your attentiveness. It requires your time. And it requires deliberate effort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the importance of, you know, or, or he, he shows us the importance of tafakkur and tadabbur by urging us to reflect and by, uh, by showing us that it is the people of deep understanding, ulul al-bab, who, uh, who reflect on, on the creation. Now, when it comes to tadabbur and tafakkur, I'm so sorry about that. I wasn't ready for class, so uh, bismillah. Okay, bismillah. Uh, so when it comes to uh, tafakkur and tadabbur, reflection and contemplation, this is something that we do on, on the signs of Allah, right? On the ayat of Allah. And when you look at the ayat, there are mainly two kinds of ayat. There are ayat kawniya and ayat shari'iya. Ayat kawniya are the signs within the creation. Okay, like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Imran, verse 190, that, that indeed in the creation of the skies and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and the day, are surely signs for people of deep understanding. And who are they? In the next verse, we find out that there are those who uh, remember Allah and they also They reflect on the creation uh, in, of the skies and the earth. 
So one type of contemplation and reflection is on the signs of Allah, meaning on the, on the creation. And then the other type of contemplation and reflection is on the uh, on the ayat shari'iyah, meaning the, the verses which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. The the you know the the, the religion basically, the Quran, the Sunnah, uh, you know, whatever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, that also demands our reflection and contemplation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimands us in the Quran that al Quran. Will they not reflect on the Quran? Do they not reflect on the Quran? Meaning, why don't they? They should. Am ala qulubin aqfaluha. Or are their hearts locked up? Meaning, if someone does not reflect on the Quran, it shows that their heart is locked up. They're not really using their heart. So uh, we see that reflection is, is a part of a, a believer's life. Any, it's their habit that they reflect on what they see. They reflect on what they experience. They reflect on you know, the little things also. The, the changes around them, uh, you know, in the weather, in, in, the, in the sky, so or in, in, in the development, right, of, of, of children, of, of different things. So uh, a believer reflects and, and they also pay attention to and, and reflect over the, the ayat shari'ah. Now, I would like to go over these verses in Surah Ali Imran, Ali Imran, verse number 190 and 191. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed in the creation of the skies and the earth and in the alternation of night and day are surely signs for people who reflect. The creation of the skies and the earth, yes. In terms of how beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the, the sky, the earth, right? How perfectly he has created them. Uh, how beneficial Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the sky and the earth for us, right? How vast they are. And then, and also in the alternation of the night and the day. The fact that they alternate, one goes and the other comes. And that this is continuously happening in, in, a, happening in a cyclical fashion. And ikhtilaf also means the difference, the stark difference between the night and the day. There are signs for people who think, for people who, who have deep understanding. And really, if you reflect over the difference between the night and the day, it's, it's so, it's so uh, uh, you know, clear uh, how you know, the night is so dark, the day is so bright, uh, and, and how their, their uh, duration also is different. Right? Sometimes the night is long, the day is short, sometimes the other way around, and how that also rotates throughout the year. There's a difference in their temperatures, subhanAllah. There's a difference between who goes about in the night and who goes about in the day. And there's nocturnal animals, creatures, and then there are those who are, I don't know what the opposite of nocturnal is, the regular ones, right, who are awake in the day, subhanAllah. And then how massive the sky is, subhanAllah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. And the fact that none of this existed before, none of it existed. Allah is the one who, who brought it out. In Surah Al-Hadith, verse number six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُولِدُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيُولِدُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ Allah is the one who causes the night to enter into the day, and He is the one who causes the day to enter into the night. And it's not like a switch goes on and off, right? He makes one slowly enter into the other. And you don't even realize, right? And it's nighttime. Or you don't even realize and it's so bright outside, subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, verse number 20, that وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُقِنِينَ And in the earth, there are signs for people who have yaqeen. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so vast and how we are able to, you know, travel, go about in different parts of the earth. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth such that it is perfect for all of our needs. 
In Surah Al-Mursalat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ كِفَاتَ أَحْيَاءً وَأَمْوَاتَ Anyhow, the earth is a is is like a container for both the living and the dead. Subhanallah. Any when we're alive, we're on the earth and we benefit from what grows from the earth. We cannot do without it. And as we die, we go inside of the earth. So how our living and our dying is is all in here. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided everything we need in this earth. So there are many signs. Now, what are the signs? The signs are basically all the evidences that point to the fact that none of this is happening on its own. All of these uh, you know, uh, signs, they point to the fact that there is someone who, who, who has created all of this and who has power over all of this. And who is that? It is the creator, Allah Azza wa Jalla. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ The ulul albab are those who remember Allah when, when they're standing, when they're sitting, and also when they're laying down. And this is not just referring to salah, but this is referring to their dhikr, their remembering Allah in their mind, on their tongue, in, in whatever condition they're in, in no matter uh, what they're doing, uh, and the dhikr of Allah is, you know, the fastest deed through which you can draw close to Allah, the exalted. Because in a hadith, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am present when my servant thinks of me. Right? That I am present when my servant thinks of me. And I am with him when he remembers me. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they remember Allah. And then, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they reflect on the creation of the skies and the earth. Who, who is it who does proper tafakkur, proper reflection? It is those who remember Allah. Those who believe in Allah. Now, tafakkur is an ibadah. It is actually an act of worship that many people are unaware of. A lot of people think that when it comes to reflection, and he, first of all, it's only women who do it, men don't do it. And then people think that it's only you know certain type of people who who reflect, uh, who who think deep. No, the fakur is an act of worship, and many people don't know that it is an act of worship, and this is why they don't bother doing it. Reflecting on the creation means that you are thinking about the favors and the perfection of who? Of the one who created them, right? Because the creation, the, the art, what does it reflect? The expertise of the artist, right? So the creation, what is that always pointing towards? The greatness, the perfection, the mercy, the wisdom, the perfect knowledge, the 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 look the kindness of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, uh, yani, tafakkur is something that uh, is is required of us. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah seventy three, that وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا that those who, when they're reminded of the signs of their Lord, they don't fall deaf and blind meaning they don't close their eyes and not pay attention to what they hear no when they encounter the signs of Allah whether it is the verses of Allah or like something that they see in the creation they listen they, they look they pay attention so worship is not just with limbs worship is also with the heart with your thoughts with your mind and at times, the action of the heart is actually more beneficial than the actions of the limbs. So, tafakkur is, is an ibadah. And Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, he said that tafakkur of one hour, reflecting for just one moment, for one sa'ah, is better than standing in prayer all night long. Subhanallah. Any one moment of reflection can be better than standing in prayer all night long. 
Why? Because when you reflect, you are attentive, you are really allowing your heart to be awake and realize and feel the greatness of Allah. And when you allow yourself to do that, you will literally cry with, with, with the fear of Allah. You will literally cry with love for Allah. You know, we learned about love, fear, and hope. How, how do you get that? Where do these feelings come from? You have to reflect on what you see, what you experience, what you hear. So every single person should take a few moments of tafakkur, of tadabbur, in, especially in, in solitude. And uh, one of the scholars, he said that I left my home and my eyes did not fall on anything except that in it, I saw a blessing of Allah for me and a lesson in it for myself. And he, anything that I saw, I saw that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing on me. And that's the thing. When a person uses their mind, then he is able to take lesson from everything. Right? So you have to train your mind that you 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 pay attention to the little things and also the big things. And sometimes we think, oh, I gotta go to the Maldives to you know appreciate the the beauty of creation. And mashallah, that's amazing, right? I'd love to go. I'm sure anyone would love to go. It's beautiful. But you don't have to wait to see something exotic and something very, very different and unique in order to be able to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. You can see it in your own home, in your own hands. You don't even have to look very far. You can reflect on, 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 on the just the lines on your hand, subhanAllah. Right? You can reflect on your eyelashes, the skin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you, right? How, how perfectly, how beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has created you and given you whatever that you require, subhanAllah. You know, just, just today, I was lighting a candle and, um, you know, I was, I was looking at the, at the wick and you know how you have to be very careful because if you push it a little too hard, it's, it's possible that the thing that you're lighting it with, you know, the, the flame just goes out, right? So you have to have a steady hand. You can't be too forceful. You have to, you know, take that moment or two. And so I was doing that and I was thinking, subhanAllah, if you're, if you're steady, if you're slow, and if you're kind, you can actually help spread light, right? And if you rush, if, if you're too, uh, you know, hard, then you lose your light and you cannot pass on that light. So when it comes to the passing of ilm, yani it has to be done in, in, a, in a delicate way, right? Because otherwise you could burn yourself out and you could also cause damage to others. So tafakkur is about being attentive. It's, it's about paying attention. Right to whatever that you see. Hafsa, how much time do I have? When do I end? You've got time, Sada. Okay. <laughs> you can you can wrap up in whatever you're comfortable, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Um, now the fakur, a lot of times we find it difficult because like there's so much going on. Right? There's so much going on. We're so distracted. So uh for contemplation, like you have to. Uh, allow yourself that that solitude where you're just alone, right? With your thoughts. I'm not saying this is how you should be all the time, but there should be moments at least once, twice a day when you are just, you know, with your thoughts. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, for many people, it doesn't mean that they have to separate from their family. It means they have to separate from, from, a phone or from the TV or from whatever that they're listening to or something that they're watching. And you have to cut out all of these distractions to allow yourself the, the space, the opportunity to think and reflect. So, and they say, 
They say, our Lord, you did not create all of this in vain. This is the conclusion of their tadabbur, of their, of their contemplation. That they say, our Lord, you did not create all of this aimlessly. It is not possible that a tree that is so beautiful was created for no purpose, was just created randomly. No, just today, uh, somebody shared a video with me about how trees grow how trees they don't just grow upwards into the sky they also grow downwards into the earth right and a tree basically has to grow in two different directions one side of it is growing in light and the other side of it which is the root system is growing in complete darkness subhanallah it's growing into completely opposite directions and, and the root system of a tree, by the way, is, is like how, how, it, it, how, how it is on the, on, on, on the surface of the earth. And the way the branches are, that is how the root system is, subhanAllah. So isn't that amazing? So why, why do all of these trees exist? Why? Just like that for no purpose? Hey, would you set up something for for no reason, for no purpose? No, you wouldn't. Any any intelligent being would not do something aimlessly. So there's a lot of people who believe that yes, there is a God, there is a creator. But then why did he create all of this? For what purpose? Just for us to live and die and kill each other and sometimes be happy and that's it? No. Allah did not create all of this in vain. He created all of this for a purpose. Subhanaka, glory be to you. Meaning you are, you are above uh, this false uh, idea that people have about Allah, that he would create all of this in vain. And their, their dua is, فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ So, O oh, our Lord, save us from the punishment of the fire. Allahumma ameen. All right. So we see over here that uh, those who believe in Allah, in his ayat, they reflect and their conclusion is that all of this has a purpose and their prayer is, oh Allah, save us from the fire. In Surah Yusuf, ayah 105, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ that there are so many people who they, you know, they pass by so many signs of Allah in the skies and the earth. They witness them, they see them, but they turn away from them. Meaning they don't pay attention, they don't reflect, they don't come to the conclusion that Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. In Surah Sad, Ayah 27, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا that we did not create the sky and the earth and whatever that is between them in vain. This is the false assumption of those who disbelieve. So, ulul al-bab, the people of deep understanding, because they believe and they reflect, they know for sure that all of this is for a purpose. It is for a reason. Uh, Hafsa, can we take reflections now? Is that okay? Yes, inshallah. Absolutely. All right. Bismillah. Alrighty, we got a few hands up already, mashallah. So let's take, especially because you mentioned uh, Maldives, let's take, oh no, I didn't see you rather hands up. Uh, okay. We got Ahmed from Fort Worth, go ahead, Bismillah, and then Ayman here next, inshallah. All right, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. Uh, I think, uh, you know, my connection with Quran has improved dramatically since I started doing the rubber. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know, it, it's just, it has made me connect with the Quran in a profound way. And uh, my brother used to do at the car for the last 10 years. I never did at the cough, but uh, this is my first at the cough. And, uh, you know, because I wanted to do more to the bar. And uh, I think it's it's such a powerful thing because uh, <clears throat> you see that in everyday life, but, you, you know, you need more time. And uh, I mean, being a scientist, I, I, I see it, you know, as a, as a physician, as a scientist, I see it in everyday life, you know, but it's, it's when you stop to think, you know, you begin to connect. 
And uh, I, I think the, the word of Quran are very strong, but it needs to, you know, they're very simple. That's the, the beauty. It's simple, but yet very profound. Um, I think it's when you start connecting, you can really make a deeper connection and lasting connection. Thank you. Beautifully said. Uh, Amy, go right ahead. Bismillah. as alaikum and everybody else. So um, I just wanted to share um, some thoughts on reflection. Um, every time I used to read the Quran and every time I used to come across a verse, um, without reading, reading the tafsir, I used to have reflections on it. But I didn't actually know, because nobody around me was doing it, I didn't actually know that you're allowed to do the tafsir. So I would always be hesitant to share my thoughts. And even with my sister and my friends, all of us, um, we would never encourage each other to share our thoughts. And then last year I came across Ramadan 360 and there was a separate section of Quran Reflect where people were being encouraged to share their thoughts. And I realized wow, this is allowed. And and so me and my sister and my friends, um, all of us started sharing our reflections with each other. And like Usada said, um, our relationship with Allah Ta'ala and our relationship with Quran increased tenfold because now it's like every time we would read the Quran, all of us would put our reflections in the group. And for a single ayah, all of us would have different reflections and we would be so shocked that, oh my God, I did not even think of it this way. And so Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I just wanted to share that, you know, my since last year to now, um, we just look forward to reading the Quran now, Alhamdulillah, because we are like, okay, this is for me. This is for me, and I'm allowed to share my thoughts on it. Jazakallah khair. Uh, it's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urges us to reflect on the Quran, and then, subhanAllah, people say that, no, this is, the Quran is not for you. You you cannot reflect on it. You are, you are not capable uh, of course, when it comes to tadabbur, there are, uh, you know, steps to to it, right? The first step is to understand what the ayah is saying, what the Quran is saying. And then the second step is to reflect. And part of reflection is, you know, to, to introspect and to, you know, uh, uh, consider what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the verse and then relate that to, you know, the world and 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 what you see, what you witness, Um but when you read an, a translation, right, of, of an ayah, remember that a translation is basically an interpretation, okay? Uh, a translation is never uh, the Qur'an. Uh, a, a, a translation is an attempt to convey the meaning of what the ayah is saying in another language. So once you read the translation, uh, then you are allowed to reflect on it, right? And of course, uh, it's excellent when you, uh, when your reflection is, um, uh, you know, when you're able to share it with people who can, who can uh, reflect with you because the fakur, you know, the contemplation can be done on your own, but it can also be done with others. And we see this in in the in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he would, at times, reflect with the companions. You know, like once he he asked them that there's a tree that resembles the believer. Which tree is it? And the companions mentioned different trees, uh, but the Prophet wasallam said no. And Abdullah ibn Umar, who was a young boy at the time, he was in that gathering. In his mind, he thought it's the date palm tree, but he was shy to mention it. And then the Prophet wasallam mentioned that it was the date palm tree. So the Prophet wasallam is comparing the believer to the date palm tree because the date palm tree is is evergreen right and it is always producing its 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 fruit right and and how it's tall there's a simplicity to it its leaves are so beneficial subhanallah so this is how a believer is supposed to be so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know he he would make the companions reflect uh so this is very important for our hearts to remain alive and for us to have a deep connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. All right, next person. All right, next, let's hear from Sir Bilkis. Bismillah, Bilkis, go right ahead, inshallah. I thank Allah a lot. So this is a subject I always wanted to learn and study properly, professionally. And then we are reward you in abundance for everything you've done for us. 
is uh, amazing. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And uh, I do look forward. I make dua every day, every day, every day that I do study with you in future about the Burma, inshallah, inshallah. And uh, for me, when you said uh, ref reflecting on the tree, that the tree grows in darkness and in light, it uh, made me think that uh, it is true. The roots is growing and it's growing in uh, light as well. If I take that to, to somebody's life, to our life, sometimes we may be in darkness as well. We may be in sorrow and being tested as well. That doesn't mean that the end, that we can still grow out of that darkness. That's how I look at it. And um, basically what the, the, the person who was uh, explaining how, how, how a tree grows, what they were saying is that uh, what happens with many people is that they just want to grow upwards. They don't want to grow downwards. They don't want to do the root work. And this is not how growth happens. And if growth happens like that, it's not sustainable. For a tree to continue to grow and be strong, it needs to have a strong root system. So you have to grow in both directions. You have to do your work and you also have to do uh, you know, the work before your work. And I think as, as a believer, as a Muslim, this means that, yes, you, you do whatever you're doing, but your basis, your foundation uh, comes from what? From ibadah, right? That, you know, for example, if you, you cannot have that capacity to be able to deal with people if you don't have the capacity to stand before Allah and humble yourself. So, Worship, you know, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that brings in you the, the capacity to work, to, to, to contribute, to give, to, to, uh, to, to, to serve. So before reaching high, all right, or before expecting that, you know, your work should take off, remember, a lot of groundwork is required. And you have to grow in both directions simultaneously. Next person I have is Lydia. Go right ahead, Lydia. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I just wanted to say two quick things. Um, this is a wonderful reflection. I'm just really enjoying it. Um, one thing that I've always done with my children is just we always say, subhanAllah, look at the the we, we live very close to a nature reserve. So we just look at our back window or our front yard and we can see just the nature. And I would say, subhanAllah, look at what Allah has provided for us. We're so blessed that we live here. Um, which we're just fortunate in that way. So just this last year, we put up a hummingbird feeder and my kids are just so excited to see the little hummingbirds just coming and going and there's different kinds. And even in that, they, they see it. The, they see Allah. They see the, the beauty and nature that he's created for us. Um, and the other thing is right before what happened, in, um, this genocide against Palestine, um, I started a Quran journal just just before like a, the beginning of October right before and it's really helped me to kind of process everything that's happening um I I live in a place unfortunately that is basically funding it um and it's been very upsetting to me I, I'm doing the, the little that I can I'm calling my representatives and I can't attend protests or anything like that because of the way my my family is but um you know just the Quran journal but being able to reflect on the Quran and, and reading a little that I can every day and and there's some ayats that I don't have the journal in front of me, but that I just have brought me peace and have helped me to calm down when I see the horrible things that are happening. So anyway, I just wanted to say, again, I love this um, reflection today. Thank you so much. And just wanted to share my thoughts. Thank you. Barakallah, Fiki. Jazakallah, Jazakallah, Lydia. I'm to have you part of the community. Next, let's have Aisha, inshallah. Aisha, Gumpa, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So my quick reflection about today is that um, in the past, I've had challenges following through with most of um, Islamic uh, programs and um, things that help us to build on our, on, on our deen. But one thing that helped me this time around is just with the word reflection that I saw when I registered on the Ramadan 360. Because it's something that I've been struggling with 
So just the name reflect, Quran reflect on it. I thought that this is something that, inshallah, if I'm able to follow through, I'll benefit greatly. And alhamdulillah, I've really benefited greatly from it. Jazakumullah khair. Beautifully said, Jazakumullah khair. The next person that we have is uh, just Z, is how it's written. Go ahead, inshallah. Um, salam alaikum. It's um, it's Zohara. Sorry, I said that. Um, I was just gonna say that um, in terms of the the book for me, like um, when I started, when I first started off my relation with the Quran and everything, I remember like I kind of had a block in terms like I couldn't like I tried to reflect on it and everything like that, but then I would just read it literally, and if I tried to, to like suss anything out of it, like it would be very like, it would be very bland. And um, when, but, but then after I realized that my problem was was like my heart, so I was just gonna. Sit, uh, and after I realized that when, because I came across a ayah from Surah Muhammad where it said, "The um uh, um, do you not reflect or are you, are your hearts locked?" And so like my reflection from my own experience is that if you if you if you're having a problem with the Quran is possibly to kind of, um, I would say it's like a prerequisite, is to, is to look at the purity of your heart because the, the Quran itself is a guide and the Quran is pure. So then if the heart is not pure, so then how is it meant to receive the Quran? Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, so Next, let's have Maheen, inshallah. Maheen, go right ahead. Bismillah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> So uh, I just wanted to say that I feel like the Quran kind of has a domino effect on when you reflect it kind of has a domino effect on basically throughout your life. The ripples of it are kind of throughout your life. So I've been reflecting on Surah Rahman from 19 to 22 and I can't seem to move forward. I keep going back for the past like five, six days. I'll read it and I'll keep going back again and again and again. And I, so it mentions the two bodies of water not mixing, but still come forth the pearls and the corals. And um, although there's obviously a literal understanding to it, uh, I was just thinking that due to, let's say, the salinity of those waters, they weren't able to mix. So it kind of, it took it of how the two bodies of water are kind of like conviction and reflection and then the absence of it. So the fact that I'll be able to bear such gifts of those corals and those pearls but the value of it will be different after reflection and through the absence of reflection. Jazakallah khair. Well said, Maheen. Jazakallah khair. Next person I have is uh, Tahiya, inshallah. Go right ahead, Tahiya. Bismillah. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Ustaza. So I'm extremely happy to be able to talk to you today. And um, I would like to share that the biggest reflection I have is with nature. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that the creation of the skies and the heaven is much greater than the creation of human being. So whenever I reflect with nature, the trees, there are like, so even if there are leaves in a single tree, there are so many different colors and the, the color that the sky takes throughout the day, that is just, it shows how powerful and how mighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That is a huge reflection for me. Yeah. So Thank you. Next person. Um, Yasmin, we'll take like a couple more folks, inshallah, before we close off. So Yasmin, let's hear from you. Bismillah. Yasmin A. A. Yari. Sorry, no, I'm sure there's probably more than one Yasmin in this session. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. So, my reflection is that this year I have made it intentional to do Quran Tadabur. So, what I have done is every week I focus on one surah and do Tadabur of one surah each week. And I've also included three to four of my friends, and we do it together. And Alhamdulillah, it has improved my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. This is excellent. You should reflect on your own and you should also reflect in a group. Both, uh, both serve different benefits. Uh, when you reflect in a group, uh, you get to reflect on matters that you did not initially think about, right? Because somebody else's reflection inspires you to reflect. Um, you you learn from other people's reflections. But then when you reflect on your own, it allows you to, uh, you know, think uh, about what you're thinking uninterruptedly. And it allows you to really connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And it reminds me of the hadith where uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that seven types of people will be under the shade of Allah. And one of them will be who? وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنًا The person who remembers Allah when alone and their eyes get filled with tears. So remembering Allah when you're alone and your eyes are filled with tears. This can be because of remembering your sins, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's you know, you know his his sitr, his concealment of your sins. Um, it could be because of realizing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's favors, and it could also be due to reflecting on the Quran or due to reflecting on on the creation that you see, right? Uh, so allow yourself to reflect when you're alone, and and let yourself cry out of love, fear, hope in Allah Azza wa Jalla. Okay, and the final uh, reflection I have is for Shahnaz. Inshallah, Shahnaz, go right ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ustaza, uh, also Hafsa, and all brothers and sisters. Um, actually, I just want to thank you for reminding that uh, reflection or tafakur is an ibadah, uh, and which is can even be more important, in fact, than uh, salah in the sense that. Because yeah. uh, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. When you're prioritizing your to do list every day, sometimes you let the tadabur and the tafakur, uh, um, how say, uh, lower in the list. So I think that's one of my resolve in this coming year. Uh, thank you to Ramadan three sixty. I think has uh, reminded me of that because sometimes when you do tafakur, it's like Allah speaking to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you're Salah, you're speaking to Allah, but when your Tafakur is Allah speaking to you and telling you how you need to live to be closer to Him. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Um, and another thing is that something that really helps with reflection, with especially Tadabbur on the Quran, is that you listen to the recitation of the Quran. And especially a recitation that is slow, that is proper, that is measured. Um, and especially if it's a reciter that you don't generally listen to, then it really helps you pay attention. Last night, alhamdulillah, I had the honor of being in a beautiful masjid, mashallah. And there, mashallah, the imam was reciting so beautifully. And he was reciting in a different qira'ah in a different recitation and that was it i i got to you know notice things that i never noticed before you know you you know for example uh the verse ara'ayta right um ara'ayta in kana ala al huda uh, in in surah al alaq he was reciting it as ara'ayta right and i was like oh my god ara'ayta and he, he he emphasized on that so much in his recitation that it made me reflect on on that particular word. So listening to the recitation of the Quran, not just reciting yourself, but listening to it also helps you reflect. And remember, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran was why? ayatihi, So that they reflect on its verses. And the sole purpose of Quran's revelation is not just that we recite it. No, it's also that we reflect on it. So uh, if it's only recitation that we're doing and we don't pay attention to its meaning or what the Quran is telling us and we're not reflecting on that, we're missing the point. Hafsa, can we please take Solange's... Um, oh, uh, yes, I see Solange. Um, I see one more. I see Hafsa here as well, inshallah. So let's, let's take Solange. Bismillah. So that I, I think I hope this session makes up for every single minute I stole from you. Allah is just, huh? Allah <laughs> is just. <laughs> Solange, go ahead. I just wanted to say something that was really reassuring. Um, my teacher is um, uh, an Arab uh, in Egypt, and he told us that we have an advantage because. The translation of the Quran, as you were explaining, is an interpretation of the meaning. And so 
we understand the meaning of the ayat, whereas because many of the terms are not used in common uh, spoken language, many Arabs don't understand the meaning of the ayat. So we thought that was really amazing. And I wanted to share it because it's really encouraging to all of us who are still uh, wanting to or working on learning the Quranic Arabic. Alhamdulillah. And uh, something that is very helpful is when you open multiple translations, uh, you know, you get to see how, uh, you know, because sometimes there's multiple interpretations and and you see the 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 variance, the, the difference in the translations, and that helps you reflect as well. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, Bismillah, Usada, I think that will be our one hour. No, it wasn't one hour. It was like 40 minutes. Quran reflected, alhamdulillah, for today. Jazakallah khair for coming in and benefiting the community. I feel like that was probably one of my favorite sessions. We saw so many like folks come back. Do say say the reflections, share subhanallah, Jazakum Khair Ustada for carrying us through this session. Uh, and may Allah make it heavy on your scale. SubhanAllah, I think when I think of you, I think of Quran. And I feel like this Ramadan, it gets better every Ramadan, but the sweetness of reflection and the contemplation and the connection is just at a different level. It's at a different peak, alhamdulillah. Um, with that, inshallah, we're going to close off for today's session. Um, so then, inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow for our Quran reflection for uh, day number 28th, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know we were going to do a plot twist and we were initially hoping to uh, to finish off and to, to switch around the session. Unfortunately, Sheikh Kamal uh, couldn't make it. Please keep him in your du'as. Uh, but I think regardless, this was such a beautiful session and it was such an unexpected blessing that we had. And yes, Ustada <laughs> Taymiyyah, I don't know if it was a secret du'a of hers. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't, but it, it gave us a chance to catch up and to get a chance to really hear from you guys in the last few days that we have remaining of Ramadan 360. So I, for one, I'm really incredibly grateful for how everything turned out. And I just want to say my Allah, you know, there's so many rewards that can be had in the, in the month of Ramadan, just being in the presence of this community and this company and being consistent in your attendance, being a source of motivation for others, smiling uh, on screen, being positive in the chat. There's so many opportunities for awards. Keep your intentions for that and ask Allah to accept it as a, as a beautiful, as a heavy, uh, you know, good deed on your scale, inshallah, on the day of judgment. This is the gathering of knowledge. This is part of your ibadah. People are coming in, mashallah, some of you on your 27th, 28th nights, you know, who are in different time zones and making this part of your nightly ibadah. So don't diminish that for anyone who's feeling like they didn't do a lot this month, but you attended regularly for Ramadan 360. There's so much goodness in that. May Allah accept it from you all. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders before we close off. One is, I know in the very beginning we were discussing some amazing folks encouraged and reminded us that they wanted to have weekly donations post Ramadan available. Uh, so we're setting that up again for Jummah donations for every single Friday. So we'll keep you guys updated once that's ready in about a day or so, so that if you want to continue that Ajr and you want to continue, maybe you have a busy schedule and you can't you know, give as much time to learn consistently throughout the year, but you want to keep making sure that you're getting the Ajr for others, facilitating Islamic learning for others and facilitating closest to the deen you're definitely able to do that inshallah we'll just keep you updated for that uh, make sure you finish strong last couple of sessions please do try to join live especially in the weekends the attendance tends to dip and people can up getting caught up in all the things that are that are keeping you guys up with family and stuff like that totally understandable but we are inshallah going to be going on until tuesday so st stay stick around for that and finally i know uh, some people were asking in the chat that they want to continue learning with Ustada Taymiyyah and they're hoping to continue this journey and all that fun stuff. And I have some good news for you guys, mashallah. Uh, and that is that alhamdulillah, uh, you know, Al-Maghrib's already got some programs that are available post Ramadan. And one of them is a weekly virtual class with Ustada. So if that's something that you were hoping to continue, inshallah, um, if you go to the Al-Maghrib website, which I've just pulled up, amagrib.org, and you want to find out what's upcoming, you can just go to online and live virtual. Live virtual is these types of sessions that we're having that are on Zoom, that you're in real time with your instructor, that you're asking questions, that you're back and forth, except it's a smaller gathering. So you have a bit more of an intimate relationship there. And the topic is Once Upon a Nile, the story of Musa al Islam and Usada Taymiyyah is inshallah going to be with us, uh, taking us down that journey and teaching that class on a weekly basis. You can find all that information again uh, through the website. And those are the dates. It starts in the beginning of May, inshallah. So we hope to see you guys register and to continue your journey, inshallah. And of course, uh, thank you to everyone who's donated and made possible for us to facilitate the one clip scholarships for those who are not able to afford it. May Allah make it easy for you all. May Allah reward you and, and multiply your rewards. I mean, with that said, that is a wrap for day number 27 of Ramadan 360. Join us again tomorrow, inshallah, uh, with Sheikh Majid Mahmoud on the topic of self-accountability as we wrap up the month. 
for now. Take care. Please make the odd that our, our brothers and sisters in Palestine are happy and healthy and safe. May Allah facilitate that. And please continue to, to support the charity sponsors who make that possible, uh, HHRD in, in the U.S., Islamic Relief in Canada, and Forgotten Women in the U.K. For now, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.